Welcome to the Hey Soul Sister podcast, where Mel Histon will guide you through life's big questions and bring you one step closer to doing this crazy journey as best you can. Hey Soul Sisters, in the lead up to International Women's Day, I thought it would be a great time to get soulful about women. Women who inspire and uplift other women as we make our way through this crazy life, and especially in terms of our careers and businesses. I have so many women that inspire me and I love to hang on to their words of wisdom, their raw and real stories of hardship and triumph and little tidbits and life learnings that make me look at a situation a different way to change my mindset to a more positive one. Because historically, women have been taught to be competitive with one another because I suppose traditionally there was such a scarcity of jobs at the top of the business corporate ladder for women. But it's clear that that strategy just does not work. The truth is that by raising each other up and channeling the power of collaboration is how I think we truly will change the equation and have a lot more fun along the way. Because study after study shows that women who support other women are more successful in business. So, today in the studio, I have two kick-ass businesswomen, women who have created and grown their own businesses in tough competitive industries, and they are going to share with us what they've learned on their business journeys, the women who have supported, empowered, and inspired them along the way, and how we can uplift other women in our careers, business, and life. Hello, Miss... Nadine Barreto, founder Hi. and GM of Eight Recruitment, finalist in the Australian Seek Awards. Hey, Aww. Nadine. Thank you. Very good. How are well, you? Well, do you know that's what we're talking about? We're talking about women high fiving and supporting other women, mm. celebrating successes. Celebrating success, and you're an Australian finalist in the Seek Recruitment Awards. Top five recruitment agencies in Australia. Yes, the top for small recruitment agencies. Yeah. Congratulations, my friend. Mm, thanks, love. And our other fabulous businesswoman <laughs> <laughs> is the one and only celebrity star. Stylist to the Stars, founder of Fasson Fashion Magazine and creative agency, Miss Lara Lupich. Hey, love. Hello. How are you? So great to have you in the studio today. Thanks for having me. And Fasson is kicking some really big goals. Yeah, we yep. are. We're getting there, getting through. It's fabulous. Through this crazy COVID time. Yeah, we're just planning our winter issue right now. Yeah. Well, your summer issue was, I think, the best issue I've seen. It Thank was, you. It was... It was over 200 pages, wasn't it? Yeah, I think 252 to be precise. Wow. Yeah, it's really long. Yeah, but amazing fashion and shoots and lots of national retailers supporting the magazine. Yep. Yeah, it's taken a while to get them on board, but finally we've got them. So it's very exciting to be taken really seriously. And it's all local like local photographers, local scenes that you do the shoot scene and yeah. local stories. Yep. That's Everyone's cool. local. That was the whole point of starting for Son here hmm. was to highlight our very, very clever creatives in Newcastle. There's a few of them around. Yep. And it's not all just Sydney and Melbourne or mm. Brisbane. So you two fabulous kick-ass businesswomen, I'm going I'm to open up this chat. Nads, I'll start with you. What motivated you to start Eight Recruitment 10 years ago? Because you've just had your 10-year business yeah. anniversary. Yeah, 11 years this year. So 10 years last year. Yeah. And so there's a few things. We had three kids under three. And as my baby was, star- my oldest was starting school, sorry, I was like, I need to get this family life and career balance right. Because you worked in recruitment for a national recruiter. Yeah. Yep. So I'd been in recruitment for 12 years before I started eight recruitment throughout Ireland, England and Newcastle. So we, yeah, I wanted to get the balance right, but also get the model right, the recruitment business model right. It was old and it was broken. So with our fee structure and our transparency of our fee structure and our business model, just it, it needed a bit of a shake up. So yeah, two, two main reasons. I'm just going to say this. I love that you said you wanted to get, you started a business because you wanted to get your life and career balance right. Do you think that that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that working for you? Yeah, is that working for you? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, do you know, I, I think it worked really good when the kids were young. I was on my own at home for five years in the home office and it was awesome. My business is my fourth child. Um, and yes. that's such a good point that it, it does your get baby. it is yeah. and it, and it, and I, I do get it out of whack a fair bit to be honest mm. but it's just knowing that you're out of whack and pulling it back in, in into balance yeah but that's women you know as uh, I'm going to say this that I think as as women we 
just take on more and more oh. and more and more yeah. house, business, school activities, yeah. sporting activities, and as I'm going to say, as nurturers and carers, but also being like driven women that we just do our best to make it all work. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you're stuffing it up here all over the place. (laughs) Yeah. Other times the balance is awesome. Um, You're screaming at the kids. Oh, yeah. Because they're not getting ready quick enough because you have to get to the meeting. Yeah. And then you get in the car and you drive off and you think, oh, I feel so bad that I just (laughs) screamed my head off at them. But I don't know about your kids, but my kids are thankfully still doing pretty okay. They seem to be quite balanced. They are. Yeah, (laughs) I think they, they, you know, it. They're actually secretly quite proud of how hard I work and how, you know, that we've got our own business and it's really cute. Yeah. I actually love involving my my daughter, Kira. She's just turned 14. She's always helped me from from the beginning of Fasson pick the final cover image. Oh, that's cool. So I'll select the last two or three, even when she was younger, like eight, ten, whatever. I'm like, Kira, which one do you like the best? And she'll go, that one. And I'm like, okay. That's the cover. That's so cool. Yeah. And so, Lara. Yes. Before you started Fasson Mm -hmm. Magazine, you had a really cool life in celebrity styling. You were over in Canada. Um, Lara styled Nelly Furtado for the I'm Like a Bird video. (laughs) Did you? Yeah. Isn't that cool? You don't know how many pairs of jeans we tried on to find that final pair of jeans. Wow. She wore, like, literally a rack full of jeans. Yeah. Well. It was a very big discussion. (laughs) Well, it was so cute. I used to love that video clip and that song. And I love that you stole that over in Canada. That is so cool. Mm. So you were styling movies and music videos over in Canada and worked with some big Hollywood celebrities there. Yeah, I was actually costume designing films. And then from that, I got into TV commercials and music videos and, and just producers would swap, you know, stylists and wardrobe designers around. And I just kind of got swapped around a little bit and then... Got the big gigs too. It was great. Yeah. And then you made your way back to Australia. Yes. Working in Sydney as a celebrity stylist. Yeah. Yeah. I came home and I got an agent in Sydney. And actually, that was how I got my break in Sydney because I didn't do this job when I left Australia. So my agent got me a cover shoot with Who magazine back in the day when they do those huge celebrity cover shoots. I love those. Mm. I used to love those magazines, yeah. like the sexiest women or the hottest celebrities yeah. and all of that. There were um, some amazing covers. Yeah, big money, big productions. You know, we went to New York for one of them. It was just like we flew around everywhere with them. It was just endless money. It's a bit different now. <laughs> no, it was great. And actually, Nikki Brigger, who was the um, editor of Who magazine at that time, um, she was actually the one who gave me my first big break because as a fluke, I got my first big cover with them and it was Kate Ritchie, Jess Mowboy, and at that time, Lara Bingle when she oh, was engaged wow. to uh, the Clark, cricket Clark. Yeah, Michael Clark. Yes. 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 And the ring went in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Anyway, I did ask her about that and she kind of gave me a bit of a dirty look. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> anyway, that was my first one, actually. It was one of my first jobs in Sydney and it was really Jeez, good. No pressure. No, but Nikki was impressed and, and gave me many more covers and we actually won awards with them. It was really great. Great. That's how the celebrity styling started. So what motivated you then to start this on magazine? Because that's, you know, making a massive leap to go from being a celebrity stylist working for magazines to creating your own magazine. Yeah, well, I think I, I achieved everything I could in Sydney and we wanted to move back to Newcastle. So I think for me, I wanted to utilise those celebrity contacts and that helped me launch the magazine and like I said before there I you know when I moved back I discovered a lot of really great creatives in Newcastle and I just thought you know what I don't want to keep going back and forth to Sydney every week although the shoots were exciting and it gave me all the experience I could have and then it just took me I guess to the next level I kind of always joked I wanted to be an editor-in-chief of a magazine (laughs) so I just thought you know what I'll just make make, make it up myself (laughs) so that's how Fasson started. Did you have any fears or doubts when you were getting started? No, because I'm just really ignorant (laughs) (laughs) about what was actually involved. But, you know, like I said, I had really great training from Nikki Brigger. I worked with really great photographers that are now, you know, international photographers. You know, they shoot Vogue covers. One photographer in particular, Chris Coles, he moved to New York with his model girlfriend and now he's shooting every Vogue cover all around the world. Wow. Well, he was my guide. He would, I'd stand next to him because you would as the fashion editor. And he'd just teach me how to frame it, how to just do it. It was a huge fluke. 
and I just wanted to share that experience with others, Yeah, basically. And what about you, Nats? When you were getting going in your business, did you have any fears or doubts? Heaps, heaps. <laughs> it's funny, I always had... I'm like delusionally optimistic. So um, am I. Delusionally That's optimistic. <laughs> yeah, like it's never going to fail. It's not going to fail. Yeah, no, failure I agree. was never an option. No. So I knew it would work. I knew that this business model would work. So that's that. I guess that's the business model, but my doubts on if I could deliver, I guess. And I think for, for the first five years, I was at home on my own in, in, a, in a home office. And there were some really, really shitty dark moments. I love that you admit that. Oh, it was awful. Like there was times, but, well, I had a bad car accident as well that like messed with my neck. I was in pain all of the time. And I think in the world of social media and especially women who are entrepreneurial women, there can be, I suppose... It seems as though that everybody's just great all the time and Mm. just making it happen Mm. and I'm really great. It's like the facade. And actually, I love the the Ola. Actually, no, I had really dark moments. Oh, horrific. Because people don't – you know, women, we don't always want to admit that. And and to be honest, um, you were probably my only one at the time that I could ring and go, I'm having a shit of a day. Like, it can be really, really lonely. Um, what did I say? A couple of wine. <laughs> like, come on and have a drink. We'll figure yeah, it out yeah. together. It's, and we just sort it for a wine. I'm, I'm just going to say that sometimes that's a women supporting women is like come and have a wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and you know, it's just having someone to listen to you. But I, I, it, I used to just maybe take for a walk, a walk around the block and like literally talk to myself. Or I'd look. This is so ridiculous. There were times I'd look in the mirror genuinely and just go, "You've got this, Nads. You've got this." You've just got to have like a stupid amount of self-belief you do even if it's that i don't believe in faking it till you make it but if you can fake the belief in yourself yes and trick yourself that you've got and this. i think that's exactly what it is you have to just believe with your whole heart and mm. soul that it's going to work out and i had um i had um i love sounds and smells so i would surround myself with affirmations of you know you've got this kind of stuff and i would like candles and i had an uplifting playlist i'd listen to it had songs if i was in a really dark moment that would pull me out Which is great. I remember years ago when I was, I discovered kinesiology meditation. Actually, I was going through my breast cancer treatment. I found a kinesiologist meditation woman and and she was teaching me about meditation. I remember she said to me one day, you know, if you're feeling flat, one of the best things you can do is put on some really good high energy music. She said that will lift your vibration. Absolutely. I drive to work every morning and I have an idea what I'm listening to on the way in. Yeah. And it's the most embarrassing, stupid music ever. But yeah, same. Kylie Minogue's my uplifter. <laughs> I'm BJ. Or George Michael. <laughs> George Michael! <laughs> George Michael. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Want to fill your soul with more? Go to thesisterco.com. Lara, who's the first woman, um, and I'm thinking about when you were studying for Son, who's the first, uh, first woman, first person who really believed in you? That would be my friend, my beautiful friend, Samantha Wills, who's a jewellery designer. Oh, we all know Samantha Wills. <laughs> yeah. She's an amazing, motivated, clever lady. Her and I met very early in both of our careers. And she went on to take over the world with her jewellery empire. She was actually Fasson's first cover girl. So I remember approaching her. She was living in New York at that time. I sent her an email in the middle of the night and I said, you know, I, I really need a face. <laughs> and you're such... An entrepreneur. She's also from Port Macquarie too. So she's from a regional town. And that was kind of my message with Fasson. It's like we're regional, but we can do it as well as, as anyone. So I, you know, sent that email, hit send in the middle of the night, you know, as your phone's next to you. And the next morning I woke up to her saying it would be my honor. Aww. And I was just like, see, I just got goosebumps Aww. when I said that. It was really amazing. And funnily enough, at that time when she came home to Australia, she was actually going through a really hard personal time and if you've read um she's just released her first book called um of golden dust and she actually writes about her very difficult time with a very nasty boy that Mm. she that was her boyfriend and i just remember her telling me we were driving up to baruby point because that's where we shot the cover and she started to tell me about it and it was just full on and i and but you know and then she got she's just so profesh and then she got in front of the camera and she was just Turned like on. you know she's wearing michael kors and armani and everything was beautiful and I, there's one picture of her and i that we've put up on our socials of her and i've locked arm in arm in those beautiful sand dunes and it was just such a moment and she was so helpful and i'll 
never be able to repay her for that. It was just such a great thing. Do you know what I love? And this is one thing, you know, we talk about women uplifting women and sometimes I suppose I have seen that some women reach a certain level of success and they're almost a bit, not not everyone, but just every now and then a woman will reach a certain level of success and it's like actually – yeah, I'm, I am I charge this now or I do this now mm. and actually I'm up in the upper echelon so I don't have time for that. And I go, that's awesome that mm. she – that's really – you know, you're putting out your first magazine and, you know, taking a, a, a big step in a new career and direction and this super successful woman living in New York is like believed in you and gone, right, yep, you can use my face. Yeah. On the yes. front of your magazine. Yes. Okay, that is freaking awesome. Mm. And I'm going to say to any women that are lifting, think about what you can do like mm-hmm. that. That's just that that's supporting another woman in, in a big way like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you've gone on to fly anyways, but I can imagine your first cover. Yeah, it was, it was well, uh, you know, I'd been on lots of cover shoots, but not with having the control of what was happening. Yeah. And the production and all that side of it was just the whole learning curve. And, and, you know, of course, the first cover was very difficult logistically. Of course, you know, we couldn't have just shot it down on Hunter Street. I'm like, (laughs) no, let's go into the middle of the sand dunes and let's take five people, you know, 500 people up there. So it was... It was full on. It was a big learning curve, and and she was and she was there. And then after that, she supported me a lot. And you know, when Fasan went through really really tough financial times, she was the person that I called upon. You yeah. know, and I said, what you know, what do I do? I have the agency. I have the magazine. They're both struggling a little bit. You know, and she said the best advice she gave me was put your hand on your heart and just follow your heart. Oh. And it was really cool. Well, high five, dear Samantha Wills. Yes. Yeah, geez, yeah. High five. We all need a, yeah. <laughs> we need a Samantha Wills in our life. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And what about you, Nads? Who was the first person who really believed in you? This podcast is going to be all about you. Oh, um, Jane. <laughs> this, I think, um, this is not a Mal, setup. Mel. No, no, I think you and Mojave. Yes. I think Stevie, I uh, uh, know this is meant to be about women, but Stevie uh, how, allowing me to do what I did. God love him. He completely believed in me, trusted me. Even when there was bad moments, he just never, ever in the 11 years as he said, Nads, would you think about going back to being employed? Yeah. Never. Um, completely believed in me. Um, and you did. I came to you and Craig and was like, love, this is what I want to do. What do you think? You're like, yeah, girlfriend, yeah. go for it. Yeah. Look at, and look at you now, you're flying. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, as I said, it's been a, a bumpy road with lots of bruises, but... um. Yeah, you you've been there literally from day one. Now you've touched on well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that I could uplift you. <laughs> I hope that's what I did. Yeah, mm. and lots of wine. <laughs> <laughs> wine fixes everything. Um, Want to save your soul? <laughs> Review us on Apple Podcast. Can you share with us because you touched on this a really tough time in business and how you overcame it? Well, because that would be you know. I've had a couple. Yeah, I've had so the, I had a bad car accident, so that put me on the back burner for a while with you know neck surgery and whatever else. That was really hard to overcome mentally, but like but chronic pain. Chronic pain is horrific, but again, it's just that absolute self belief in eight recruitment and telling myself, tricking myself that I've got this and I can do it, and that got me through. I took on twice. I took on two business partners who I thought were better than me and would add so much to the business. They're awesome people. It made me realize that I'm actually, I know what I'm doing. I've got Mm. this. I don't need them. Mm. And I was convinced that to grow the business, I had to take on these people who had come from huge agencies on an international scale at C-suite level to come and they could see the potential in what I was trying to do, but they couldn't do what I Mm. did, what I do. Because it's also your heart is right in it. Yeah. And when you really believe in it, it's, it's like. You can do it the best. Yeah, yeah. And like 24-7, I yeah. was just there. Yeah. And then the, the other one that's turned into the most beautiful thing was, um, it was extremely challenging though, was bringing Steve into the business full time. Like that was really stressful. Uh, you know, we've got three kids and bringing him in because he couldn't work anymore on the mines from an accident. There was the pressure on me to produce the income for a family of five. Yeah, wow. It was really stressful. But again, his belief 
we and, do I, it. and I'm going to say as much as, you know, Stevie plays a really important role in the business, you're still the top dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you're still, you see. <laughs> oh, st- 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 Stevie's not listening. <laughs> listen to this one, Stevie. <laughs> I do um, remember one time Stevie said, who do you think we're doing as the pants in the family? And Craig and I both pointed to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he's a big softy. God love him. But I love it. That's you know that's awesome that your hobby allows you to shine. Yeah. I mean, and and I mean, it even seems silly saying that word. Your yeah, husband allows yeah. you to shine, but actually, historically, that's not the case. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And my and my hubby's the same too. So he's very supportive, and you know, he's seen that bank account go right <laughs> yeah. down, and he hasn't really said too much about. It. Well, actually. He's never actually really said anything about it. And he's like, you know, you just have to keep going. Well, I always say it takes a really st- – like people meet Steve and think he's just the most sweetest, most sensitive, which he is. He's beautiful. But it takes a really, really strong man to handle a really strong woman, not the opposite. I think people think you need a, a walkover of a husband if you're a strong woman. It's like, yes. no, it actually takes a strong man yeah. to handle a strong woman. Well, to be your collaborator as well. Yeah. You know, in – not just in your case, the business, but in, in your life. In life. Mm. He's, he walks alongside you. Yeah, yeah. 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> so, Lara, tell us about, has there been a, like a tough time in your business that you've had to overcome? Yes, there's been quite a few. I think COVID was really tough for us. I mean, we did a really big 360 from from being a print magazine, which was a great passion of mine especially when the whole world's going digital. I was a bit snobby about, you know, having things you could hold and that were tangible. And, you know, I love having a nice glass of wine and reading a good magazine. So that was the hardest thing. It was like, do I close or do we turn into a digital platform? So we did. And my team really supported me on that. And that was really great. They actually pushed me as well. And I I really respect that they, they pushed me. And so it's been an even greater success now. Going digital has been a really great thing. Yeah, Our reach has expanded. The title's expanded. I think this next issue for winter, we are going to do, I think we're going to start doing like print VIP runs so everyone can access the magazine free digitally, but then they'll, the, the special people in the <laughs> world will get a VIP hard copy. Yeah. So then I can just have a f- tangible library when this is all over. There'll be like all the volumes of it. That's yeah. Really cool. yeah. Let's get soulful yeah. on social media. Search the Sister Code Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. So who has given you words of wisdom that have inspired you on your journey? Mine isn't from a friend or someone I know. Mine's from a book and an author. And I almost live by it every day. Robin Sharma and the book is The 5am Club. And the quote is, to be what others aren't, you have to do what others don't. I say, I say it to my kids every day. Oh, I think I'm going to write that down. I absolutely love it. And, you know, if, if you don't want to make that one sales phone call, just make it. You just have to do that one bit extra. Yeah. Or for the kids, just go, if you want to play rugby professionally, go and do another push-up, I don't know, but to be what others aren't, you have to do what others don't. Mm -hmm. Getting up at five o'clock in the morning or being disciplined or, you know, being silly enough to go and start your own business. Like, you know, just put yourself out there and do what others others don't, to be what others aren't. And that's interesting because that's sort of my little motto. My grandma, my beautiful grandmother that was always into beautiful things and fashion and all of that. I think that's where I learned about all this from. Russians, well, my family's Russian and Russians have a saying, if you want to do something, do it properly or don't do it at all. And I think that's kind of on the same yeah. sort of wavelength. Yeah. This one's just a little harder, like a harder saying. But Well, the I, other one I heard was um, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, stupid stuff like I take the trolley back after I've been grocery shopping. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Like, you, you know, have integrity, work hard, just yes. be a decent person. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think you just have to apply the same effort to everything. Yeah. Mm. So, Lara, who's a woman that really inspires you? Hmm. That would have to be the amazing Anna Wintour, who's yeah. the editor in chief of American Vogue. Yeah. The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They say that that Meryl Streep's character was built around Anna Wintour, but there's a really great documentary about her. And Vogue, and it's called the September issue. Yep. And if you can ever have a look at it, it's actually really inspiring at how hard they work, how, you know, what a strong woman she is. She just encompasses everything 
that's really cool. Hmm. Yeah. Do the sunnies ever come off? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, maybe. I can't remember. But And just how she surrounds herself with, with really great women as well. Her creative director of Vogue is a woman called Grace Coddington, who's a really amazing, world-renowned creative director. Yeah. So she, her and Anna Wintour are, have a renowned love-hate relationship, but they obviously both really respect each other and then tell each other exactly how it is. So I find her mind-boggling and how she really runs the world of fashion. You know, in that documentary, you watch her sitting with, you know, Valentino and other really big designers. And these are all men. And they're sitting next to her and going, well, Anna, what do you think? Anna, what do you want? Is this good for the next season? And she's she's guiding them. And I think my industry is probably an industry where women really do kind of hold the more top positions. I think it's quite amazing. Yeah, see, recruitment has been all men at the top. Yeah. I've been in recruitment 23 years and still not much has changed. Yeah, wow. there's so many men at the top. But you've changed it with your, with, with eight. Yeah, there was and also, um, and in fairness to them, the girls at People Fusion, Sally and Ali, they, they you know, were the first probably recruitment owners who were female that I knew of. Everyone else is a, a man. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good... And, and actually, when you first started your business, you had a male who owned a recruitment agency who, like, attacked you on social oh, media. Yeah, yeah he on called me media. Um, a Darby's pie. Yeah. yeah I forgot oh. we talked about that. Yeah. Uh, emailed me to tell me that I'm nothing but a Darby... Out of nowhere, you're nothing but a Darby's pie. No one knows what goes into you and no one comes back for seconds. <gasps> it was horrific. Goodness me. Yeah. Well, I would just like to say I'm sure he's eating, or I hope he's eating his words now. Because <laughs> I hope he's eating a Darby's he's pie. He's eating pie. <laughs> it's humble pie. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon well, the pun. <laughs> yeah, it was it was horrific. And, and then, interestingly, so I emailed him back saying, look, thanks for your feedback. It's a shame you don't understand my business model, whatever. And I, I, I was boiling my head off, but just left it. And years later, I saw him at a rugby luncheon, and I went out to him. I said, we haven't actually met in person. I'm Nadine from Mate Recruitment. It's really nice to meet you. If you're going to be involved in this rugby club, you know, it'd, it'd be nice to kind of get off on a better foot. And he went red and was shaking and he's like, oh, are, are you upset with what I sent you all those years ago? I'm like, absolutely not. It was unwarranted. It, uh, but no, it didn't upset me when I absolutely wow. did. But, you know, he was such a keyboard warrior and in person was this little mouse. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I think, strong or perceived strong men to see mm. a strong woman come up in their industry and tried, such a threat. To, tried yeah. to put me in my place. Yes. Yeah. And who's a woman that's really empowered and supported you and you don't have to say me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, no, a lady by the name of Jo Burston. Um, she, when I first started the business, I thought that subscribing to Business Review Weekly would help me and give me some tips on how other people are running their businesses. And about five months in a row, there was, you know, Joe Burston, the top five for this, top 10 fastest growing for that, top 20 for this. I'm like, who is this woman? So I did a bit of research and she started a business in her lounge room. And, and ended up, you know, having a multi, multi-million dollar business. She's amazing. So I rang her office and just said, look, could you please pass on a message to Joe? I've just started my business in my lounge room and her story has really inspired me. And I just want to say thank you. And that's all it was. And next minute, Joe Burston's calling me saying, Nads, oh no, she didn't know me as Nads then. Um, <laughs> Nadine. No, Nadine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's Joe Burster and I nearly fell off my chair. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, uh, she said, just want to say thank you and how's things going in business. Like she was genuinely interested and she said, come down to Sydney, let's go out for lunch and just gave me time. Oh my goodness. And that's what I love. That's what I'm talking about, you know. We've mentioned Samantha Wills and now Joe Burston, yeah. two women that are at the top of their game that are amazing. And I love. And so busy. And so busy. And I love that you, number one, you had the balls to reach out to her and go, <laughs> yeah, that's Hi, amazing. I think you're really great. And number two, she called you back and yeah. said, we went out for lunch with her. And we've got a lovely friendship. And she's really passionate about helping women be entrepreneurs. Like that's she's so, so passionate. Fantastic. But yeah, she did not have to do that. And she, when you talk about top of her game, I think this she was at the top of her game with this business back then and yeah it took two hours out of a day to take me out for lunch she's she's awesome so i'm gonna say we are talking about you know women in business women starting businesses growing businesses women supporting women in business and i'm like that is one thing that we can do as women is actually give each other 
our time, mm-hmm. our time and our words of wisdom and our life learnings and things. Because we've all been through crap times. And what do they say? The crap times are there to teach you something. Yeah. Really. Well, we even talked yeah. about, um, you know, when random stuff happens that you don't see coming, but it happens for the right reason. It sets you on a different path. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, but you, you, you've got to go through that. But when you do go through that, you have the right people around you to help you go through that. Yeah, I agree. You have to support. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that shows confidence and something that comes from within. You know, you feel that you can share it with other people. Yeah, it's it's really good. And do you know what? We are constantly learning and growing. And I love. I get really inspired by successful women that are out there. Actually, now it's listening to them on YouTube or seeing their Instagram videos and things, and that I get really inspired. And it's funny. I go between. I love soulful spiritual uh, female teachers and leaders like i'm gonna gonna call it oprah you know i always i'm always learning something from oprah but it's probably more that soulful spiritual side about yeah okay well how do you live a calm joyful life full of love and compassion but then still run a business and a Mm. family and have a crazy life like i i really love learning from her and i love that she talks about you know, she says, God, I'm just here as a vessel. Use me as best you can. You know, I'm just here to serve you and, you know, and and I'm here to, to help people. I love that. And I often think about that with Got Your Back, sister. Sometimes when I'm really stressed, I say the same thing I do. You know, that's how Oprah inspires me. I'm like, okay, God, universe, whoever's there, I'm just here to, you can use me to help other women and, and I'm just you're amazing to at that. that like there's been quite yeah. a few times where I've because I'm like if I didn't have the network I had bef- when I started the business like how do you get that network how does it start and I was so lucky that I had you but how does it start and the, there's been quite a few women that I've hooked up together going hey Mel you'd be great Help, can you just give this this lady an hour of your time when you never never ever say no oh, never well. but I also think that's how we that's how we do stuff. That's yeah. how we get stuff. That's how we're successful. And if mm. we're once successful, we can all be successful. Mm-hmm. So we may as well connect, network, yeah. collaborate, work together, support each other. I'm going to say this. I don't suffer fools. And if someone like that, if someone, I'm going to say this, someone's a bucket to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually probably not going to uh, keep you in my world. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's only been one person that that's ever really that's come about who shall remain (laughs) remain nameless but but i'm like you know that's one thing we can as women give to each other to uplift each other give each other time Mm. and and connect and and figure out ways that we can work together do you know what else it is i think it's speaking positively of each other as well or and if you hear another woman giving out about another woman trying to give it a crack and throwing they, shade yeah like kind of it's stop it cool. yeah, yeah like g- give it a give it a rest girlfriend she's she's trying her hardest yeah mm-hmm. you you go and do it yourself like i think if we stop bad 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 language about women trying to do something different yeah, i agree yeah. i'm gonna shout out another woman that i've started following on instagram her name is mel robbins and i'm sure there's many a woman who's listening today to this who would have heard of mel robbins so she's like an author and life coach and i it's funny, whereas I suppose I see Oprah, you know, as soulful, spiritual, looking at that bigger picture in life. I was listening to Mel Robbins this morning on um, YouTube, and she's very, she's pr- probably a little bit more of like the hard ass, kick ass uh, woman, you know, talking about confidence and how you can be successful in life and business in, in more of that kind of like dynamic. I'm going to use the word kick ass again, but you know what I mean. Mm. So I was listening to her this morning, and, you know, she's like, look, people think, might look at me and think, oh, yeah, she's got it easy. She's got it sort of bit. I've been through really rough times. And actually, this is what I found. I Visualization is so important. And then she went into the science of visualization. Mm. She's like, even every morning you spend 30 seconds when you get up, even if it's only 30 seconds, but you visualize what it is you want that day. Yeah. Or if you have bigger goals, you need to visualize that. And so she's very much into the research and the science as opposed to the woo-woo. And she says, I've researched this and visualization is really, really powerful and it's going to help you get to where you want to be. And I was like, I just love this woman. Mm. Again, so, such a different vibe from, you know, other women that I listen to that are more on that whole soulful spectrum. But I'm like, yeah, I, I love it. it works that. for you. Like if you've got yeah. two different angles, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about visual. I can't even say the word visualization. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's powerful. Mm. Yeah. Want to fill your soul with more? Go to thesisterco.com. In the lead up to International Women's Day, I'd like, would both of you be able to share maybe just one tip 
put something out there to the women that are listening, something that they can do to uplift or inspire other women? I, I think that there's, there's a few things. Could do some introductions. Be there for them. I give Actually, them any- introductions is is a good one because yeah. some people are really cagey about. Oh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to share my network. I don't yeah. want to share my network yeah. with oh, you. I'm like, yeah. I can't wait to get people together. If I can see how I can help someone with someone else, I'm like, you you two need to meet people. Well, so, it's also the energy that you're spreading around. Yeah. You know, the saying is, "What goes around comes around," yep. and you don't do it for that motivation, but it's definitely a cycle. Yeah. You know it. It happened to me. People would introduce me. I'm sure people introduce you yep. and, and Mel as well. And it's just how you – that's how you grow. Yeah, definitely. There's no other way. Yeah. No, don't, don't, don't hog your network. Don't hog your knowledge. Yeah. Don't hog your time. Like, be generous. Absolutely. Generosity begets generosity. Yeah. I'm yep. going to say that. It's true. It, it will come back to you. Good karma. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, my friend? That I just steal all your answers. <laughs> <laughs> Mel asked me for one. I think I gave about five. Well, I just so I was- feel what, I feel that everything that comes out of your mouth, Nads, I'm kind of relating to as well. So you're kind of going, oh yeah, that's a good one. But that makes sense because you're both business yeah. women, mm-hmm. family women. You know, just building and building an empire. Yeah, I think my one of my main ones would be kind of along the same lines, and it's you know giving opportunities. Mm. You know, we run internship programs. We work with TAFE. We work with the University of Newcastle. You know, a lot of uh, magazines or heads of magazines don't have that luxury because it's a pure commercial enterprise and they have to answer to too many high ups. Whereas for me, that's it. I just answer to myself and go, Lara, is that a good idea? And then Lara goes, yeah, that's fine. So I think um, just giving people really great opportunities regionally. So, you know, the kids don't have to leave home and move to Melbourne or Sydney. They can stay here and grow and... I think it's important to have your family support around you too. So that creates that option if they want it or if they don't, they can just leave as fast as I wanted to leave Newcastle when it was my time to go. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to say this. One thing that I think we all saw recently, and that was the wonderful Ash Barty. Oh. Yes. Win the Australian Open. And then Yvonne Goulagong oh come my out. I know. It was so and cool. And that was so cool. And then I didn't realise what a wonderful um, – relationship that they have that Yvonne Cawley or Gulagong had been mentoring yeah. Ash Barty over the years and yeah. I was like that is a beautiful gift that is a gift to see the young pup coming up with yeah. the with the um, wise woman older woman experienced woman yeah. sh- mentoring Ash and, and sharing her wisdom and experience I, I just I, I thought that was really beautiful and, and look at Ash shining now yeah and just the way she received that win was really noble very gracious and and, you know and gracious and I think that's probably the other thing if you can accept where you're going with your life and your career with you know graciousness Mm. it's it's a good thing yeah I think it's a good Mm. thing well thank you so much to both of you for coming in today and sharing some of your stories and wisdoms and insights and who's inspired you on your crazy life journeys Thanks, love. Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Hey Soul Sister with Mel Histon. What would help you on your crazy life journey? Email melissa at thesistercode.com.